So I bought this tractor brand new with a front end loader. And the first day I got it, I jumped on and I was moving some dirt around and I got to realizing very early on that I could not see what was going on directly in front of the front end loader bucket from the operator station. I played with the bucket level indicator a little bit. I got it set, but uh, as best I can tell, the accuracy for me on that is probably an inch plus on whenever I'm trying to make that adjustment. So here I'm trying to scrape the ground, take off as little as I can. And just, it wasn't working very well for me. And so I thought, well, if I could see what was going on in the bucket, I might could do a little better job. And so I put together this prototype, I'll call it a bucket camera, just so I could see what was going on directly in front of the tractor. As I was running the loader, I got to thinking, well, this will make a good box blade camera as well. If I've got a camera pointed to the box blade, I don't have to turn around and look at it. I think that helps improve safety quite a bit when I'm always looking forward instead of looking backwards while the tractor is moving forward. So I think here I'm going to go put the bucket on the front end loader so that I can remove everything that the box plate scrapes off. There is nothing like having the right tools for a job. So I'll just make a little note here. The monitor on the bottom right hand corner of the screen looks pretty dark. But in real life, it, it looks a lot brighter. Uh, this is a very bright day and I think the camera has adjusted to the majority of the image, which is not that camera, I mean, not the monitor. And so uh, that's why that monitor looks really dark. But that monitor is showing a real good view of what the main picture here is, which is of the box plate. However, as good as it looks on the box blade, uh, having the camera mounted on the bucket is where this project really shines. Seeing where the cutting edge of the bucket is, the height and the angle, with that I can skim the surface and scrape and see exactly what I'm doing with a level of precision that I'd never be able to do without the camera. Now I know some of y'all can probably do exactly what I'm doing here and probably do it better without a camera, but the level of precision that I'm trying to do here, I, I personally cannot do it without that. A little view here of some back dragging with the bucket. After playing with the front end loader and just the frustration that I had while I was learning how to do it, uh, just seeing this level of precision, 
that I'm able to do with the camera is just that's just awesome. I'm a little surprised that John Deere doesn't offer this option on their tractors. And if they did, I'm pretty sure it would be about a $3,500 option. I'm actually thinking maybe a backup camera for a regular car or pickup might be the way to go. The screen will be smaller. I bet it'll be a little brighter. And it'll just be a plug and play. You, you plug it into the tractor and it comes on and runs and just put the camera wherever you want it. I think that might be the way to go, you know, going forward. So here's what the finished product looked like. The uh, box blade made quit work of this little project. So here are just the major components on this particular project. This is a regular old computer monitor. I got that off my wife's computer. Y'all don't tell her. Piece of aluminum stock there one and a half inches wide, eighth inch thick, and I just bent it around, used my vise, uh, made a bracket there, a wall mount bracket for the monitor. I just bolted that directly to the aluminum bracket that I made there. There's the inverter that runs the 120 volt monitor. That's a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. And yes, it is red out of the box. I could not mount anything red directly to my green tractor, so I came up with a plan to remedy that. And that's what the finished product looks like. This inverter comes with a 12 volt automotive style power plug on it for a power input. I ended up lopping that off and just putting a regular SAY connector on there so that I could connect it directly to the battery on the tractor. As for the camera mount goes, uh, same piece of aluminum stock there. I bent it around just to the angle that I needed to show the, the front of the bucket there. That is a CB magnet from back in the day. When I, that's a good strong magnet and I don't have to drill any holes in the tractor, the bucket or the back, and so that seemed like a good way to go with it. But if I have a recommendation, if you're gonna do something like this, I would say You'd probably be better off just going with a probably a, a low end, medium price range backup camera. It comes with the monitor, probably be a little brighter during the day. And you can move that camera around to the front or the back. It already runs off of 12 volts, so you don't need the inverter. That's probably what I'll do when I get done playing with this. But anyway, I was pleased with the results and, and what I was able to do by looking at the monitor and seeing what's going on directly in front of the bucket itself from a vantage point that I can't see from the operator station. I think that's gonna about wrap this video up. Uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments, drop them below. I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you on the next one.